I'm just going to shut the computer down now. As you can see, it has that one single stick of DDR4 RAM. You Hello folks, and welcome to NetCruiser Tech. Today we're going to do a little test on my new gaming desktop here and see, does going dual channel in 2018 on a modern 8th gen Intel system make any difference at all? This computer that I got has one 8 gig DDR4 and it runs at DDR4 2133. Always known back in the past that going dual channel made a big difference, getting two RAM sticks that were matched. So I went on eBay recently, and I was able to pick up two Mushkin Red Lines, DDR4 with nice heat spreaders, and these are DDR4 266, and this is ideally matched for this Intel i5 8600K, according to Intel Arc. I'm going to do a Cinebench test with the one 8 gig stick that's in here right now, see what kind of score I get. Then we'll install the dual channel 16 gig. I'm going to take the 8 gig stick that's in there completely out, or probably sell it, and I'm going to put in a 16 gig dual channel at 2666 megahertz, and we'll see what does that do for the score. Now I do have this system set for 4.5 gigahertz overclock, uh, just because that is what I got for most stable on air on the CPU cooler when I'm really pushing it in VR. I have been able to overclock it up to 5 gigahertz, as you may have saw, but it really, you know, it will thermal throttle when it's at load for a significant amount of time, so I just wanted to make sure it doesn't do that. So it currently peaks at 4.5 gigahertz. We're going to run the CPU test in Cinebench 15 right now. Okay, so we got a slightly lower Cinebench score of 1064 Cinebench. We got 1064 Cinebench and 136. Now, I'm going to keep all these settings the same, except for I'm going to install these two new RAM sticks. And I'm going to bump up the speed of the new RAM to DDR2, DDR4 2666, and then we'll get a reading of what did that do for performance. Okay, so I'm just going to shut the computer down now. As you can see, it has that one single stick of DDR4 RAM. You might not even be able to see it, but I'm going to completely shut down the computer right now. And then we'll power it off and put the new RAM in. I'm also going to unplug the power. While the power's unplugged, I'm just going to press and hold the power button, which, as you saw, that erases all the power out of the capacitors. Now we're ready to install the RAM. We set that aside. So for RAM, RAM always has the little locking arm, so you just want to make sure that that unlocks. And that's it. One RAM stick out. Now it is kind of hard to see on modern DDR4 RAM. It is kind of hard to see is the which side is the longer side. Looks to me on this motherboard the longer side is at the top, so we are going to do that. As well as you need to make sure you check your motherboard manual for dual channel mode. Okay, so get the bottom in, get the top in, click it into place. Bottom in, top in, click it into place. That should be it for dual channel mode. That should be it. Now this red scheme does kind of clash a little bit as almost all my other components were gray, but I do have these red ring fans, although I had bought fans to change those out, but Anyway, I got a deal. This was off eBay. RAM is very expensive, so if you can save money on RAM going used, why not? I'm going to do a quick power test on and make sure that it uh, detects okay. Hit the power button here, make sure it actually boots. Kind of goes okay with the red lights. Anyway, that's just cosmetic. We'll see you in a second if it makes a difference for performance. Alright, I have just booted up the computer in the Windows and I'm running the Hardware Info, HW Info 64, and it has shown that my Mushkin RAM has been detected at DDR4 2666 with a clock speed of 1333. So the, uh, the Intel JDEC or whatever it's called, speed stepping stuff was detected properly, and both RAM sticks are being picked up. Mode, dual channel mode, 16 gigs. We are now going to run the CPU test in Cinebench R15 with the 16 gigabytes DDR4 RAM in dual channel mode running at a higher clock speed. So let's see if it makes a difference. Running CPU test now. And it didn't matter at all. We got a 1061. 
It didn't make one bit of difference, at least according to Cinebench. Cinebench don't care, because the old one was what, 162? It actually went down. I mean, you know that 16 gig of RAM is better than eight, right? It has to be. Let's do the OpenGL test. <laughs> I just had wondered if going to dual channel mode would make a, a, a difference in the CPU test. Yep, uh, it doesn't matter. Cinebench doesn't care about going to dual channel RAM or even doubling the amount of RAM in your system. It got the exact same amount that it did before. It even went down a bit, I believe. And I know it's worth the money to have the more RAM, but I just don't know what to do to test it better. So this is the old original RAM stick that was in it, Komoda RAM. 8 gig DDR4. Oh, it says it's 2400. I could not get this to run at 2400. It would only run at 2133 no matter what I tried. So I don't know how you're supposed to get this to detect at 2400, but it certainly wouldn't for me. But this new stuff I just put in, the Mushkin picked it up immediately at 2666. So that's good. And then I can try and overclock it and tweak it and do whatever. I just don't know what's an appropriate test to actually test the results. To all right, guys, so if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment below. Tell me what I should be testing to determine if dual channel RAM actually improves system performance on modern PCs. And as always, thanks for watching.